Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, today we got Vanille, the voice actor for Neon in Valorant. Uh, how are you doing today? I am doing great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so we're super excited. I got a lot of requests for you. And I don't, <laughs> I don't usually, I get like, you know, certain ones quite often. But as soon as you were announced, I was, that was my comment section <laughs> for so long. So I'm well, super excited to talk to you, and I'm I'm very lucky to have you here. A pleasure. Uh, I do want to start out with saying that you did a fantastic job with uh, Neon. Oh, thank you. And oh. I want to know how important that was um, because you are representing, you know, your culture mm -hmm. and where where you yeah. you're from, and how important mm -hmm. was that to do right by that and I just want to know some of the thoughts behind that. Oh, yeah, it's definitely super important for me, super crucial because we don't often get Filipino characters in video games. So I feel like hey, whenever there's a new one, um, there's these really high expectations. So we got to get everything right. It has to be close to perfect. So I was definitely feeling some pressure from that. But I, you know, I did give it my best and hopefully that showed <laughs> yes it did it did i promise uh, <laughs> thank you i i love the the representation of different parts of the world in valorant especially there's a lot of games yeah. mm -hmm. that are doing it now um but valorant especially really brings out um kind of even in like the cinematic the announcement of neon uh there was a lot of yes uh, I want to know, is there anything that you put in to maybe the cinematic or did they, did they have? Um, in terms of what you can see, no, but what you can hear, yes. Um, I was the one who included the, the, her first Tagalog line in the trailer. Hi, buhay, that was me. Um, it, it wasn't in my script. Um, my script for the trailer was all English and they were asking me actually to translate the home sweet home line. But I was like, so I explained to them, we don't really have a Tagalog equivalent of home sweet home because we're very bilingual here. So we just say home sweet home. We don't have a Tagalog for it. So then we worked off of the context behind why she said home sweet home instead. And it's because it's sarcastic. She doesn't feel like it's home yet. That's why she you know, brought out all her stuff that made her feel home. So, yeah, so instead of home sweet home, I I just said hi buhai buhai. It's like an expression here for like oh life. That's how, what it means. Yeah. I love it. Um is it, how, how this this ride has been so insane for you. Uh and I can <laughs> see that cuz when I Yes. When I originally followed you, I mean it was I wasn't the first person, but I, I definitely was earlier in it and I kept checking and like refreshing your stuff and it was just blowing up and yeah was that like what are the emotions going through your head when that stuff's happening uh it was a roller coaster um before this before Neon and Zeri I had never really talked to media before it was um you know podcasts with some friends here and there but it was wasn't mainstream media in the Philippines so that yeah. was something new and kind of scary but you do get the hang of it after a while and I guess there's this intimidating aspect like oh these are media people but yeah. when, when you're actually there sitting on the interview with them it's a lot more casual and they're very friendly a lot of them were fans of the game themselves so that it was really fun chatting with them yeah that's awesome I I do it's I could see how how grateful that you were for this whole opportunity and that you weren't, you know, just blown past it. And I'm glad that the Valorant community, it's such, it is sometimes there is like a, there's a corner that isn't very good, but there is a lot of good and supportiveness when it comes to, you know, at being a voice actor for it. And a lot of people love you and it's super great. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. not sure if you've gotten anything about your character, but I'm assuming that people eventually are going to tell you to fix something about your character, but you, you know, 
<laughs> it's just... already happening. They were like, nerf neon. I can't do that. I'm just the boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I figured it had already like started. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I I know one of my one of my friends who's also a voice actor for Sky Miranda. Um oh. she she has gotten a lot of people that asking for a like in game cosmetic called the Riot Gun Buddy. I'm not yes, sure if I've been asked for oh. some too. <laughs> I can't give those away. I'm not a dev, you guys. <laughs> it's already starting. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's already yeah. starting. Uh so how how did this whole thing come about about getting not only did you get one riot video game <laughs> yeah. you got two so tell me which one you book first and then how do you get a second one <laughs> i have no idea how this <laughs> happened i think i'm just super lucky um i auditioned for both of them at the same time okay so i found also found out that i got both of them at the same time i have no idea if that was the intention but that was what happened for me yeah and, uh, yeah i i really don't know how this happened it's just insane you know to, to be in one is already so crazy mm -hmm. but to be in two it was like <laughs> mind blown <laughs> yeah i i was mind blown because i think the the neon one came out first the announcement am i right yes yeah, yeah. and then like how many days later or however long later i see it again just a day later <laughs> yeah. i'm like are you kidding me like how does this happen yeah that's that's insane, insane. and props it to is. you props to you <laughs> but when it came to what because the riot is very secretive um at least mm -hmm. in the audition process probably even there's a lot of things you don't even know um that they wouldn't tell you or they can't tell you yeah during actually recording for neon um but i do want to know the things that you were allowed to know um before you did you know it was valor or how long mm -hmm. until you knew it was valor um i had two auditions mm -hmm. um my first audition i didn't know what games i was auditioning for I mean, I knew it was Riot Games, but I could kind of tell from the art style, but they didn't tell me which games it was. Um, yeah, but about what they said in my audition about Neon, well, I had concept art. She looked a little different in the concept art. Um, and they told me she's from Manila. She has some sense of community. You know, she loves her family. Just pretty basic stuff about her personality. You know, she's tough. She's, um, she's very driven. Those are some of the things that I remember seeing there. And uh, yeah, not much has really changed about her personality. Um, yeah, what really changed was um, little bits about her appearance, but yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What What were things that they told you um, to kind of get that that voice out of you to, like, were they looking for a specific voice or did they let you kind of free reign with how she would sound and kind of her quirks and stuff like that. It's funny you ask that because um, so I had my audition. My, my second audition was uh, with both Neon and Zary. And so um, I asked them at my audition, did, did you want them to sound different or should they sound the same? Something like that. And they actually told me that, oh, we, we don't mind. Um, we're not focused yet on how they sound. We care more about your acting more, blah, 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 your performance. So, um, but any, but I went for different voices in my audition anyway. And so mm -hmm. I, I don't know if those were the voices that they were looking for, but I guess they, they liked what I did there. <laughs> yeah. I, I've talked a lot about, because um, I've talked to a lot of voice actors. Uh, I And me, myself, I'm obviously not an actor or anything, but... I do pick up on on some things about whether the director knows what they want or mm -hmm. um, that they are looking for someone to bring that to life, whether they kind of have an idea or mm -hmm. they should just go for it. So I'm always curious yeah. to know if if your director was like, I want this and that's how you sound and you should do that. Or if you just had free range to kind of make up that voice. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I did give them different voices. Yeah. And um, because um, the way they were described to me is that they're kind of opposites. 
Okay. So what I did was, so I gave Zeri the higher voice and Eon the lower voice to differentiate them. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it makes sense, you know, not having the same, pretty much the same character. But uh, I mean, pheno- yeah. phenomenal job on your part on on both of the characters. I haven't really gone into too much League, but as a, a Valorant um, connoisseur in a way, uh, <laughs> I really, I really did appreciate your performance uh, on oh, the character. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, when, when it came to like, uh, how, how long ago did you book this? Cause I, I'm curious about the process of. Yeah. Um. So I auditioned for the first time in March, and then I got my call back last year, and then I got my callback audition in April, and then they told me I booked it mid May so of last year yeah yeah it's Uh, been that long wow so you just had to (laughs) sit and just yes oh you understand it was so hard oh my (laughs) goodness that is awful (laughs) it was that was pretty awful i'm just glad it's over (laughs) i was expecting like yeah i booked it back in like november or like I, <laughs> oh my god! I wish, I wish. I remember one of my recording sessions. I asked them, so like, when is this coming out? And they were like, um, January next year. And I was like, what next year? Oh, that <sighs> is terrible. Because yeah. I, I always think the same thing with, with like movies that the actors do. They literally. Like, it could be a long time, because especially if it's, like, a big budget movie, yeah. you know, like, the after, the editing, the CGI, whatever may mm-hmm. be. Long time. And then, <laughs> like, in my eyes, I would either, like, well, see, I, I'm going to put a little sidebar in there. A lot of the voice actors for Valorant are, like, yeah, I don't know what take they, they picked because it was so long yeah. ago. And then, mm-hmm. so, yeah. so there's that. And then, but like, I would, I would just forget a whole bunch of things and wow, almost, that yeah, was literally like almost a year me. ago. Yeah. 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 And so like people ask me, they're like, what, what did you like add in there? What the God guys did you add in there? And I'm like, I don't know. I can't remember. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is so crazy. Yeah. Uh, is there, uh. I do want to, before we get into really deep Valorant, I know we talked about it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Where did you uh, grow up in, like, everything? Yeah, um, I was born and raised here in the Philippines. Okay. In a, in a town called, um, Bul- in a town called Bulac- Baliwag Bulacan. It's, um, it's more of a r- r- rural side of the Philippines, but then I moved to um, Manila, the capital, when I was seven years old. And we've lived here ever since. And yeah, so uh, I got deep into voice. I got into voice acting pretty early. I was 10 or 11 years old when I found voice acting on the internet. Somehow I saw people doing it for fun on YouTube. And I was like, this looks like fun. I want to do it too. So I started doing it there. Um, It wasn't until I was 17 years old and I joined a, a voice acting contest in the Philippines on TV. And that was um, how I got my foot at the door for our in- local voice acting industry, basically. And from there, after that, I started doing it professionally. You know, I did some Tagalog um, dub stuff. I did an anime called Pandora and a Crimson Shell. I did the, the, the Tagalog version of the Nickelodeon cartoon, The Loud House. I'm in that. Um, and some Hollywood movies here and there, but also I've been voice acting online for independent um, games, animations, mobile games here and there, and yeah. <laughs> I love it, and and then it's so it's just I love to hear the story because I we we know where you're at now, and I know that you're not done, and yeah, it's, it's awesome, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I I think it's just incredible to to hear all these stories and you're really uh i see your tweets about helping people get into voice acting and yeah not a lot of people do that like they just uh like just tell their story and then but like you're you know alternate 
uh, schools of thought and yeah and it's it's awesome that you are thinking about people who want to do that as well oh thank you because um i guess you know i guess maybe other voice actors are too busy to do this and i got more <laughs> free time in my hands but um uh... yeah because i've been dreaming of this since i was a kid and when i was a kid i didn't know a lot of Filipinos around me who wanted to get into voice acting are a lot more now but back then I was just I was like the one Filipino girl on the internet doing it online and if I see another Filipino person I'm like hey because we don't see that often but um so that's why I want to encourage people to do it because I think I think it's the it's something that when people know that this exists they want to try it but they don't know how mm -hmm. so then I so I I know all this information. I know how to get started. So you know I want to share it and yeah. hopefully contribute to bringing the next generation of local Filipino voice actors. Mm -hmm. I I do think that is very true. That whether it's you know every kind of uh, media in a way has that where a lot of mm -hmm. people want to do it but they don't know how and they don't know where to get yeah. started. And yeah. I do think that it's important that, you know, you give them a little guidance because you could have, you know, the next person up and yeah, you just, you can be, yes. you can be a, a light in that tunnel in a way. So yeah. I yeah. Do. And I just want to add that, um, cause a lot of people and friends, mentors helped me along the way. So I feel this responsibility to pay it forward because mm -hmm. those people who helped me, they didn't ask for anything in return. So I feel like I have to pass on this knowledge to people and yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Did, so what, what was the experience like, um, recording during COVID? Um, Oh yeah. Where, okay, where, so where did you record? Was it remote or uh, you can? Yes, go on remotely. Um, my auditions, I did them just right here in this room, both of them. Um, initially they were at, they, we were supposed to have the auditions in a studio, but then they came back at me and was like, um, actually we're just doing it online now. I don't know what happened there, but that happened. Um, yeah, but for the actual game, we had to record in a studio here. Um, and yeah, for the first few sessions that I did, I wasn't even vaccinated yet because um, vac vac vaccine supplies weren't that great at the time. So yeah, there was a time that I was going there unvaccinated, risking my life and shit. But I, I and at the time I was taking a break from going to studios because I was like, this is unsafe, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to record at home. But <laughs> I know I can't turn down Riot Games. So I <laughs> did that. I am vaccinated now, thankfully. But <laughs> yeah. What do you... Uh, so how, how did you actually interpret things uh, like for Neon... Uh, in the in the kind of holes that they couldn't give you, is there anything that you uh, kind of had to make up yourself in in certain situations to bring out like different things in her personality at all? Um, I guess that would be her speaking Tagalog. I I just I want to clarify, not all of the Tagalog lines that you hear in the game were from me, mm -hmm. um, but there are some that were from me. There are some that were tweaked by me too um and then outside of the game trailers teasers those were mine the Tagalog stuff and yeah I'm really grateful for how Riot really allowed me mm -hmm. to do this they really trusted me and yeah I, I'm not trying to like you know praise myself but I do I do I am proud of how I got to contribute that part of me on to her yeah yeah, and I think I think that's something that you should be proud of. Um, cause there <laughs> there is a lot, you know. It's there's a lot of culture in the game, and it's important for people, especially you know people in the U.S. or just either any place in the world to learn about different cultures and different, um, just different ways of life to you know either appreciate their own or appreciate yeah. that culture and stuff like that. And I think video games are a, a different way of doing that but it's also yeah. very important if you're going to be doing that every day you know 
to, you can yes exactly yeah video games are a part of our lives so yeah. we should be able to see and the other way around a part of our lives in the video games because yeah. Yeah. yeah and and there's very good and i hope that it's very accurate <laughs> representation as as far as you could go with with a character in a video game but it's also yeah <laughs> it, it brings out a lot of life and even in the scene in the bedroom where neon has different things on her wall and stuff like that and it was, it's very cool to see that stuff um yeah for sure I, I just i i really appreciate that about valorant that i it's i don't know it's just very cool yes i i definitely agree um how let me let me just think are are you comfortable doing <laughs> some some voice lines here for us oh sure although i don't memorize my lines so don't worry Do okay worry. okay <laughs> i have them i feel like okay great everyone yeah. everyone says that so when i i when i start the podcast i pull up every line so i'm very used to it <laughs> Yeah, it's the voice actor thing. We don't need to memorize our lines, so we don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there is a lot. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. And and what I've noticed with Valorant <laughs> is that there's a lot of different variations of things. Like, there would be the same line, yeah. but it's just said a little bit different. Just slightly different, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so. Yeah, so they make us say lines that are like, okay, say this one like they're just next to you and then say the next one like they're far away oh really i know i've never yeah never that. that's pretty cool <laughs> um is there have you mm. have you heard a lot mm. of of lines consistently that people like about neon yes um Is... they like the oh grab the spike um <laughs> they like uh, oh i'm pissed <laughs> Um, I like that I'm pissed one too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh there's there's the when you pick the agent, she says move or get zapped. Oh yeah. <laughs> move or get zapped. Yeah. I think is what she says. Yeah. Uh I I I love hearing the lines just in my ear from like a Zoom call or something like that. It, just, <laughs> it makes me nerd out a little bit. I love it. <laughs> So what else? There's, I I do, I like um the what interactions between characters. Those ones are always good, mm -hmm. and so I I'm gonna try to find a good interaction between someone. Um, but I don't. I remember. I have a I have a favorite one. It's with Ooh. Ray's. Okay. Yeah. Um where Neon's like trying to call her attention, but she's like wearing headphones and listening to music or something. Yeah. She's like, Ray's! Why Ray's? Oh, and um about that line, um what she said at the end was oh, never mind. But about that line, originally that was in English. It said never mind. But I replaced the rever the never mind with the Tagalog of it, and they ended up choosing that one as the line in the game. So I thought that was cool. Uh, there's so Ray's. You got a plan, or are you gonna, you know, do what you always do? So Ray's, you got a plan, or are you, you know, gonna do what you always do? Can't remember if that's exactly how I said it, but, but uh, the Ra line. There's Ray's. The plan is never mind. Just keep blowing them up. Raise the plan is never mind. Just keep blowing them up. <laughs> you you are extremely talented. I I do have to say this is this is amazing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, how is how is the your mental side of all of this? Um, how is that going with this extreme change in a lot of eyes on you now? Oh yeah, I mean, it's a roller coaster. I always describe it as that because that's really how it is. Yeah. You know, it's really high. It's like, oh, all these people and they're like so happy about this. And then there's those where I feel all this pressure and sometimes I'll see one off comment, just one, and it'll get to me. And yeah, um, I 
took a, a week long break because <laughs> before that I was like doing interviews left and right and making t- TikTok videos and then looking at all the comments and dealing with all of that stuff and it kind of it I got burnt out yeah and then, yeah yeah because I had the same because I was feeling this pressure that like um all of these people are looking at me right now but they're not going to look at me forever so I got to keep you know, doing things, keep their attention on me. But that ultimately <laughs> led me to burn out. And yeah, so I, I, I do have a therapist. I see my therapist, so that helps. Yeah, that's... I don't know what I would be doing if I didn't have one. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. It is it's a huge change. And I can't just like go back to normal after this. That's not how it works. I can't just like take it back. So yeah, I'm hanging on. I mean, I can't complain much it's been overall great Mm -hmm. overall I'm really grateful yeah yeah it's it's a thing um obviously you're on a a larger scale and I always have to say this but I I have felt you know with a lot of eyes on me like um with videos going you know viral or something Mm -hmm. like that yeah and then there is there is this pressure but then i almost think there's a pressure of you can't feel this way cuz this is what you've always wanted or this is yeah. this is something that people people would literally die for like you're mm-hmm. in a position you know that mm-hmm. way and then you're like you have pressure on yourself to not feel that way and then mm-hmm. once you realize that you know you're still the same person and you're allowed to feel things and a lot of eyes exactly. is a lot of eyes is scary sometimes and but mm-hmm. you know it does get easier um and like not letting i think not letting comments like ruin a whole day for you um yeah stuff like that yeah it's it, it definitely takes a bit of time to get used to i guess like mm-hmm. the first few ones they would really get to me because I've never had to deal with anything like this yeah. but I love what you said about like how sometimes we, we feel this pressure like, like you're not supposed to feel bad because this is your dream or like people would want want this to happen to them too but um because I think this is something that I've like noticed about public figures I think people forget that pe- public figures influencers and all that were they're still human yeah they're allowed to feel bad like like any other person yeah yeah and i i don't know i just i feel like there's a lot of unwarranted pressure that people put on themselves uh to you know be okay or show up for something that they don't Mm -hmm. necessarily have to but they feel like they owe it to someone and Mm -hmm. like yes there is like that thought and my brain probably thought in your brain that like you know you these people are the reason that you're here or some you know way and we owe mm-hmm. it to them to put out a video or something some sort of content yeah. but you know those that that week break that you took that is so important um because no one's asking yes. you if you're okay or anything you just kind of have to just sit there and deal with it by yourself or family members or anything like that who's gonna mm-hmm. listen um because again if you if you most of the time a lot of people are very supportive but if you tweeted out something like that or something i bet there's people who are like you know you're neon you're like you're in the neon voice actor what do you possibly have yeah. to be sad about but you know you're a person yeah so. yeah i get that you know when i took that break i tweeted about it now I didn't get any bad comments because I disabled <laughs> replies for people who are not following me because um because I know that there might be people who would say that mm-hmm. and um I get where they're coming from but I do want to talk about these things publicly because I feel like social media looks like this perfect world yes. and I want to reinvent people it, it's it looks like a highlight reel sort of and people think you're always doing good so then i i want to be more open about that to some extent so people see that you know it's not all sunshines and rainbows mm-hmm. it's okay to feel down sometimes it happens to everyone yeah yeah do you what is most important to you when it comes to the message that you want to bring 
Uh, is there a certain bullet points or is there a certain cause that is really important to you that you want to air out to the world or? Um, I am um, supporting, um, I, I recently um, got into supporting this um, non-government organization. They build schools here in the Philippines. That's one thing that I'm passionate about. I want to be able to give back to my community. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to explore doing that more but at the moment it's just so crazy so many things that I need to do but yeah <laughs> yeah that's one thing that I definitely want to do and I guess in general I just want to inspire people and, you know I mentioned helping it into voice acting it's really one thing I want to do and yeah just you know help inspire people help people like that and I guess I just want to seem a little more genuine online it's one thing mm -hmm. I want I'm going to try my best about it I I mean because I hate seeing myself personally like I put out this like video of me like crying when I heard Neon's like teaser yeah um and yeah it's on the internet and at first it was just on my Twitter but then I saw people were putting it on YouTube and I'm like no why I hate my I look so ugly in this video but I, I stand by it. I wanted I wanted to look like I'm not perfect all the time. And I, I'm just not gonna look at the comments there ever. I'm gonna pretend it doesn't exist, but yeah. Well, I did I did see the video on YouTube. It was actually <laughs> I was gonna say I did I did see it, it popped up. But I what I interpreted it as is you were very grateful and you were yeah. you were very you were just showing your appreciation for everything that was coming in so and yeah in that way at least you know um here's a comment just out loud uh that you Ooh. that is a very good it's a good reaction and that you know we're appreciative of of people who work on on these games that we love and uh we just we just want to show you that uh, that you did a good job, and we're we're very happy to have you in our community. So, oh, <laughs> stop! I'm gonna <laughs> cry. But I'm a cry baby. <laughs> <laughs> but w uh, another thing is like I think it's also important, and I I'm glad that you you have things that that you want to do, and you know helping with schools and stuff like that is super important. Mm -hmm. And if there is, I don't, I don't know if there's like a specific one, but, uh, if there's like a link to anything, I would gladly put it in the description at the top. If anyone wants to go, if there's donations or anything like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll definitely send you that okay. and reach out to them too. If there's any specific way to donate to them. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I would love to do so that. Nice. Um, but also like when it comes to a lot of people's motives, um, mine being when, uh you know quite some time ago like around six years ago i was i got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes so that's a very big thing mm -hmm. in my life that i carry with me i try to mention it as much as possible because you know it's not a thing that a lot of people think about and um mm -hmm. my content creation journey i'm not only creating content about you know type 1 diabetes but it's very important to me and um and it's what I stand for in helping people who can't get stuff that they need or can't afford. Anything under the sun about it is is what I, you know, stand for mm -hmm. and what I preach yeah. all the time. So I, I do appreciate, you know, having something that you, you really are passionate about. And I'm glad to hear that that's uh, like building schools and stuff. That's very awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you. I don't want to be able to do more eventually. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's it's not a lot that or it's not all the time that people even think about stuff like that. So it's it's cool that you're mm -hmm. you're even thinking about doing more <laughs> on top of that. So that's awesome. What are what are some of the struggles of of voice acting in especially a time now in COVID and all this crazy madness of the world what are what are some of the things that you've had to deal with even recently or at the beginning hmm 
Well, in the beginning, I one of my struggles was that I am in the Philippines. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I thought it was impossible to be in big games like this if I was in the Philippines, <laughs> but apparently that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> which is great um I, I hope it only goes um up from here not just for me for local voice actors mm-hmm. everywhere who are not in the U.S. um yeah I'm, I guess another thing that I personally struggle with is just how freaking introverted I am I'm very shy I, I <laughs> and so I would go to auditions sometimes so my hands would literally be shaking while I'm waiting for my turn and yeah I, I'm always even even to this day, I'm always still nervous before my recording sessions, especially if it's, if it's with people that I haven't worked with before. Mm-hmm. I feel like for my first two or three sessions with Riot, I was definitely super nervous. They are really great people, though. They're very professional. And they, my director, um, Kevin McMillan, he makes an effort to like let you know, oh, you're doing great, um, you know, and stuff like that. And that helps a lot. But yeah, that's, I guess one of the things that I really struggle with yeah is is that like so how is that really important to you as a a voice actor um like to to be let known that you're doing well or like do you need that or is that not something you need it was just nice i mean it, it's it's nice i i i can get through a session without being told that but <laughs> yeah. I guess it's just my personal issues with my anxiety that i should talk to my therapist about <laughs> but you know it really <laughs> it helps to know that it helps me relax and mm-hmm. and yeah. yeah what what was the the most nerve-wracking thing for you in i guess in your career what what actually made you the most nervous probably auditioning for these for this one auditioning for yeah for, okay. for league and valorant because and i i really felt this like pressure i have to get this because if i don't get this i'll always be thinking about how i didn't get this yeah especially because my brother is a fan of both of these games and while i was auditioning for valorant he's like literally playing valorant and so um i knew that if i didn't get this i'm always gonna see my brother playing Valorant and I'm going to think I should be in that game, but I didn't get it. You yeah. know? Um, so it's, yeah, it, it was, I really felt that pressure. I didn't because for us um, actors, our kind of motto is when you do an audition, you forget about yeah. it. So you don't feel bad when you don't get it. But this one, I can't forget it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm glad I don't have to. <laughs> What what was your brother's reaction? When when did you get to tell him or did you tell him early or I wasn't even allowed to tell him. Yeah. And I wanted to be I wanted to be the one to tell him, but when Neon's trailer dropped and it was in the middle of the night, so he was still asleep, I couldn't tell him. But when he woke up and he left his room, he'd already known about it because his friend sent him the freaking trailer and I was like, This sounds this is this is your sister. I saw an article that it's your sister. <laughs> And was he super so excited? I didn't get to see his reaction. Oh. But, you know, he was. I didn't get to see his reaction when he oh, sent yeah. him that. But yeah. uh, you know, he's honestly he's like trying to play it cool because you know it's your sister, and he's like, oh, okay, I guess you know. Yeah, you can't be. I know. Too I know. Secretly, he's really, really excited about it. Secretly. <laughs> Again, not on the same same level, but I, I'll tell my siblings like that I did something or anything and they're just like yeah whatever like i'm like right my video hit over a million on tiktok and they're like oh okay like whatever (laughs) yeah Uh, i I totally get that and and it's it almost sucks because you just like i just want you to be impressed by me (laughs) but (laughs) it's whatever yeah i I, I, maybe he's upset about it because now he'll never he'll never escape my voice yeah he has to hear it out in the kitchen or something, and then go back in his room. And he's <laughs> just, yep. Here's I'm pissed. Yep, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I did. So, did you? Are you a video game player at all? Yes. Yes. Um, I tend to not play competitively because I get anxiety from like <laughs> letting down my teammates and all that. But I have been playing games since I was a kid. Uh, my earliest memory playing games is. 
um, on a PlayStation 1 with my cousins. Yeah, we used to play games like Tekken 3 on it, um, you know, Street Fighter, that mm. stuff. I didn't get my own um, gaming platform until yeah. a PSP. I got a PSP. That was my first. That's a good and console. I love playing Final Fantasy uh, Crisis Core on there. And eventually I got a PS4. It's some cool games there. My favorite games to play are story based games, very narrative driven, you know, uh-huh. like Life is Strange, that kind of stuff. Those are my favorite games to play. And yeah. I'm, I, I I just got a gaming laptop. I know, I'm definitely I, gonna you know play that. Valorant and stuff now. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah, because my Valorant? excuse was super excited. You know, my excuse why I couldn't play was because oh I'm on a MacBook, I can't play. But now I don't have an excuse, so I gotta do it. And mm. I, I am really excited. I'm just so busy. There's so many things that I still need to do, and I feel like the moment I play Valorant, it's just it's gonna wreck my entire schedule. <laughs> So I feel like I need to set it aside for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> I I was surprised on how, because usually, uh, I don't think I've gotten a voice actor off like when their character comes out. I mean, your character's still pretty recent, and this is I think this is the quickest that I've talked to a Valorant voice actor since their character really? came out. So I was very, I don't know. I it was it was very cool to me that that I was still like off. You know, the hype is still there and and everything. And you still managed to, to see yeah. at least one of my things. So I was very happy about that. Yeah. And I mean, speaking of hype, I mean, Riot really hyped up Neon really, really, really <laughs> bad. I yeah. mean, they, they teased her in Champions. She has a teaser on social media before her trailer. She has billboards in Manila. I don't know really? if you know that. It's, yes, she does. She has several, not just one, around Manila. It's crazy. And they made that whole video of me. That whole feature that I did yeah. with them. It's insane. Yeah. Now they're giving away neon merch to fans. Really? And it's, yeah, there's, there's neon merch. Like, it's the basketball jersey that oh, she, yeah. she that's on her bed in the trailer is is one of those they're giving it away it's so crazy they sent me one wild. too it's super cool oh yeah so that i did yeah. see that uh maybe yeah. on instagram or something that's cool yeah that's really cool i yeah. always thought i always thought they should do more stuff with you know characters and you know like whether they definitely it's, should. Whether it's like, and I think it's starting because yeah. they're doing all they're doing these things where they're going around the world with agents. And I know Sky was the last one that they did. Mm-hmm. She was like, she went to Vietnam or something in a video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you have you gotten a chance to connect with any va- other Valorant voice actors? Yes. Yes. Um, a few of them tweeted me. A few of them DM'd me um yeah everybody's just so nice i got to and i i got to i guess meet them online through those tweets and dms um i met naomi um, shannon um gabe um miranda also reached Mm -hmm. out to me on instagram i think and and carolina everybody's just so nice um I, i definitely would be interested to you know go on an actual like call or stream or something with them Mm -hmm. (laughs) eventually if they want that (laughs) well i i know i'm maybe carolina is busy right now but i know she does do uh streams with the other like she every time someone new comes in or whatever she so bring them bring you on kind of like this in a format but she streams and uh she does that so i'm sure you'll have the chance to do that and then uh you know uh, all the other voice actors are are really just amazing people and a lot of them are my f- yes you know oddly enough my friends will call me and be like do you see the voice actor for blah blah, blah just tweeted at you and i'm like yeah <laughs> like i'm i'm i guess i'm friends with them in a way <laughs> you know so yeah. i don't know it's it's really cool a lot of these you know the valorant voice actors obviously i've never had a bad experience with any of them and they're all Mm -hmm. just the the sweetest people and 
Gabe, when I, I mentioned before the podcast that uh, my audio, I wasn't recording audio. It was a podcast. With that G was with Gabe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for 30 minutes, by the way. It was like, and oh I, was, my I, God. I was like, Gabe, I'm so sorry. Like, I felt so bad, but. You know, it happens. I couldn't fix it. So it does happen. Yeah. I'm sure you understood because, you know, as a voice actor, sometimes we forget those things too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and Gabe, I just want to touch on this because I, I, I don't think I could ever say it enough. So he's so talented. He's so, yeah. it's scary talent too. It's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It blows you away. Yeah. His trailer voice is insane oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> blows my mind yeah. also by the way every time a trailer comes on my mom my mom would be like is that is that him like <laughs> she, she watches my tiktok so yeah she's like and then or there's one movie that she knew that he was doing and then she would, she called me one time and was like i just i just heard gabe's voice and <laughs> that's so cute yeah. It's so cute your mom's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> she she's very supportive of ev everything and she she'll obviously see stuff. Uh I don't think she actually listens to my podcast, which is fine, <laughs> but she definitely watches my TikToks. <laughs> That's nice. How how has how have people in your life perceived uh your dream of of voice acting? Is it was there ever a negative uh you know connotation? behind voice acting yeah i guess you know the stereo the asian stereotype <laughs> <laughs> you know um gotta get a re regular job um, and stuff I, mean, I did get some of those <laughs> but um you know i i i think i'm very lucky that somehow everything worked out mm -hmm. but i i did go to college i do have a degree that was my backup plan i guess because you need one <laughs> over here <laughs> yeah but yeah i'm very i feel very lucky and privileged that everything worked out this way and i, I acknowledge that not everyone has the luxury to you know pursue their dreams some people have to prioritize putting food on the table and be the Absolutely. breadwinner of their family yeah. which i am very fortunate that i didn't have to do because my family's doing well so that's why i really feel this sense that i need to give back to people who aren't as privileged because i know that my life is um i guess i'm on a better part of my life than they are so i want to help them out yeah and it's it's very important to ag acknowledge that as well and mm -hmm. um i also feel the same way with you know everything that has happened in my life all the ups and downs i still feel very lucky to be you know where i am and i just think that's very important to acknowledge mm -hmm. in that sense um yeah i do want to get a couple more voice lines before we get out here because i know that people are gonna yes absolutely love them but it's gonna take me uh a little bit to i i don't like Oh, this is a good one, actually. Uh, Ooh. Uh, Sky, if your pets find them, tell me. I don't speak wolf or tiger, whatever. Sky, if your pets find them, I, what was? Is that it's such a long line? Yeah. If pets it find is. them, tell me. Okay. Yes. Find them, tell me. I don't speak. What was it? Wolf or tiger, whatever. Or whatever. Sky. If your pets find them, tell me. I don't speak wolf or tiger or whatever. The reason I love that line so much is because my first viral video was, uh, uh it was with Miranda and oh. she, uh, we were talking about her abilities of her character and I was like, do you know the abilities? And she said, yeah, she's, she's got the birds. I know about the birds. And then she has a Tasmanian tiger. And I was like, like, what are you talking about? And she goes, I was like, <laughs> I have no idea what it, it, what that is at all. And she goes, it might look like a dog to you. And I was like, oh, like, I just realized that it was a tiger. Cause everyone says it's a dog. And then Wait, I thought it was a dog too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> no, see, that's what we do here. We 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 teach people. <laughs> And so then I realized that no one, like everyone just calls it a dog. And I don't know if people know even what a Tasmanian tiger is. Cause I had no idea what it even was in the first place. And then, ah. so, so then now everyone, they even, uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm going on a little tangent, but I, I just want to say this. No, they, go ahead. They also said it on the, uh, on the Val, like there was a Valorant tournament going on. And then one of the casters said, did you know it's actually a Tasmanian tiger? And I was like, I know that's from my video. Like, I know <laughs> that they got that from... Because I was the only one who posted it. And yeah. so it was cool that I, I... I'm pretty sure one of... The, I was named... Or I was kind of, like, referenced on the Valorant. That was cool. But yes, it is It is a Tasmanian tiger. And that's... That's awesome. Hmm. Uh? Oh, I'm going to fry that pot. I'm gonna fry that bot. <laughs> uh, I I sense maybe a little bit of a rivalry with Jet going on here. Are you are you sensing the same thing? Yes. Yeah. It's in lines. They're always like racing. <laughs> Who's faster though? <laughs> I mean, Neon's literally known for her like speed, lightning <laughs> speed. So, um, not biased or anything, but of course mm. not. <laughs> of course not. Uh, that jet is all speed, no skill. She's mine. Exactly. That jet is all speed, no skill. She's mine. That's awesome. We'll get one more. Uh, okay. I'm. I don't want to butcher because it is uh in a different you know language yeah but i'm going i'm going to tell you uh so it's astra your aim was on point and then it's h u s a y who say say um. who say that means um good job or something um yeah what was it astra your aim is on point yes astra your aim is on point who say yeah. huh? Oh, uh, last one, and then I uh, and then we'll wrap this up. But yeah. uh, we did that. Uh, Lola, is it Lola? Lola. Uh, Lola I know you'd yeah. be proud. We did that, Lola. I know you'd be proud. <laughs> and that's. Oh, uh, I don't want to cry, but there's just I have a little story about that line. Um, I f I feel connected to it because. I lost my grandma in 2020. I lost her. I'm very sorry. So I'm kind of that. sad that she didn't get to see this happen. You know, mm -hmm. she would be so happy to see. She, she's, you know, the type of grandma who just like brags about her grandkids. So, oh, she would be so happy to know all those like interviews that I've done and I'm in the paper and sad. So, because I know that I've mentioned that to the developers in one of my early sessions. So I, when we got to recording this, I noticed it and I wondered, did they put that because I mentioned my grandma? So I asked them about it and no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> they did do that on purpose, but um, in a way it kind of gave it new meaning. And it was, I feel like it was, you know, the stars aligning that somehow the writer thought to put that in there even if i he didn't think about it that way and it was like yeah <laughs> that is amazing oh i hate telling that story it always makes me cry yeah it i kind of got a little bit scared too <laughs> uh, i'm sorry no no you're good you're good i'm i'm glad that you felt like you could tell that on here i appreciate that <laughs> i think that is a fantastic way to end it and i'm i'm so i'm so happy that i got to talk to you uh and it always makes yes. my day when the not not only talking to the neon voice actor but talking to a person that was that exceeded all expectations so i i really i really appreciate it thank you very much oh thank you thank you so much um this was really nice you know this is what i'm talking about these like interviews they're always so casual and mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great people to talk to. And...
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I, again, I appreciate it. And, uh, we'll, we'll try to get as many, uh, like links, um, to your socials, but, uh, importantly, we'll get something where people can go and donate or even just read about something and expand yes. their knowledge on, uh, what's going mm -hmm. on in other parts of the world. So that's very important, uh, here and, you know, everywhere else. So, uh, I appreciate it. And thank you guys for listening and watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.